Hello guys, my name is Desmond and I welcome you to my lesson for today where we will be looking at your mathematics. So ladies and gentlemen, as always, please do allow me to say it is very much important that I say it is very, very much important because zo, zo, zo. what I'm about to say it's massively, massively, massively. Hey, massively important, ladies and gentlemen, that I say a day without learning something new, it's a day wasted. By so saying, offense. Please, honorable member, please, 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 to me the two miss. Please do make sure that by the end of each and every lesson that I conduct, you learn something new. Very, very much important, ladies and gentlemen, over there. So very quickly, before I go deep in today's lesson, I would like just to quickly confirm for the last time, if you guys are able to clearly hear me, and again, if you can clearly see over there. But most importantly, I would like to just mention that it's load shedding on my side. So just in case if I'm breaking or in case if you are not able to clearly see over there, just let me know immediately so that I can try something else just to make sure that uh, this lesson um, records uh, nicely so that whenever you catch up, uh, you will be able to uh, go through this same lesson without any disturbance. So for the last time, quasi the maquasis, can you clearly see there, can you clearly hear me when I speak, honorable member? Anyone who can confirm that for me before I go deeper? It's clear so I can see everything and I can hear you. Okay, 100%. So good people, since I've already indicated that it's low chilling on my side, let me not waste much of our precious time and take this opportunity to indicate that in today's lesson, that same question paper that was posted in the group is what we will be looking at in today's lesson. So what I'm going to do very quickly is to read through that given statement and take you through that diagram or sketch. And most importantly, we are going to look at those questions uh, and answer those questions. Most importantly, please do make sure that you spend much of your time listening and less of your time writing so that you can clearly hear everything and uh, understand what I will be doing. So I'm about to now read on the given statement, which says A, B, C. Okay, the moment examiner says A, B, C, let's look. Where is A? A is that point there. Where is B? Okay, there is B. Where is C? There is point C. Okay, they're saying A, B, C is a tri. Hello, I come back. Uh, Charlotte, can you clearly see, can you clearly hear me, honorable member? Uh, I was disconnected for a moment, but I'm back now. Can you, can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, 100%. So this is what I was saying. A, B, C being those three points is a triangle with vertices. Remember, we said vertices refers to the corners. Every time when I see that word, the vertices, I remember last year when we were saying, eh, if you want to talk to me, talk to me direct. Don't go through the corners. Meaning, do not go through, the, what is it, the vertices. Yes, um, vertices A being one and three, a, B, having T and a zero, and C, having P and negative four, with 
P greater than zero in a Cartesian plane. Most importantly, do not get confused by examiner saying P greater than zero. It simply means that this P value is more than zero. And of course, P value represent the X value of C of which the X value you can see is on the right side of the origin. So we are obviously expecting a positive value for that X value. So do not scratch your head the moment you start seeing P greater than zero and you wonder where exactly am I going to use that? Okay, so let's continue. The last sentence there, it says, A, B, hey, where is A? Oh, there is A, there is B, makes an angle of 45 degrees with the positive X axis, of course. It does make sense to me. Uh, they are saying this is the horizontal. And we've got that line being line A, B. And if you remember, when we did our introduction to this chapter called analytical geometry, we talked about what we call a line of inclination forming an angle of inclination. So, that means that 45 degrees, it refers to what we call an angle of inclination. Meaning, I still remember during that lesson, we said the moment you see that angle immediately, remember this formula which says the gradient of a line is equals to tan angle. Uh, I think while I'm still on this point, let me firstly emphasize something very, very much important. To say, uh, someone is in grade 12. Uh, they've just attended my lesson for the very first time today. Good people, I would like to indicate to you that uh, this is not the starting point of maths. This is not the starting point of uh, this chapter. So, just make sure that you remain in this lesson until the end of the lesson. And most importantly, once the lesson is done, if necessary, you can send an inbox to say, where is the lesson where we started with this chapter? Because what we did was to discuss three most important things. And in addition to that, I'm going to indicate also what we discussed. We discussed uh, the distance formula uh, the midpoint formula, and the gradient formula. In addition to that, if I remember, we spoke about this line called line of inclination. I explained all of that fully, and that includes an angle of inclination being that angle over there. And also, we discussed how to determine an equation of a straight line. So that means equation of a straight line. And lastly, under this chapter, you should also be aware of how you apply all this information on quadrilaterals. So at all the times when I do lessons, I don't just start with a question paper, but I firstly take you through an introduction where I talk about all that you need to know all that you need to be aware of. Then, once we have discussed all of that over a very nice cup of tea, that's when we can start with answering exam type of question paper. So everything that I'm going to be doing in answering those questions is based on that first lesson that I conducted where I was taking you through an introduction. So someone might feel like, hey, uh, I'm seeing flames. I don't even understand uh, what exactly they are doing there. But I'm telling you, that is because you are starting uh, in the middle of the chapter and not at the start of the chapter. That is why we record all our lessons so that in case if uh, you join at a later stage, you can still catch up on those previous lessons. Very, very much important that all of you guys join our homepage to access this recorded lessons. Massively important, ladies and gentlemen, over there. Okay, so now, uh, lastly, they say AC. Remember, 
uh, under this chapter of analytical geometry that includes the functions on paper one when something is written in capital letters and they say a c at all the times just know that it refers to the distance so otherwise it refers to the length length from point a to point c very very much important so now that we are given that length or distance let's quickly write it down where's a there's point a where's c there's point c meaning a c is actually equals to square root of 50. so we might need that as we continue with our lesson for today most importantly i would like to make you guys aware that whatever that i'll be doing it will be based on all that information uh, that we discussed and if you guys remember the slogan we said at all the times analytical geometry is a game of two things analytical geometry it's a game of two things you will notice that the moment the examiner says calculate the distance you ask yourself the question do i have two things radiant do i have two things midpoint do i have two things determine equation of a straight line do i have two things do i have two things do i have two things hello do i have two things hey this is how i know if hamisa has attended today's lesson if you get it hey what am i saying if you don't get it forget about it hey hamisa has attended a today's lesson so i'm at that point where i'm about to now do a very quick interpretation of um that given diagram or a sketch this is what happens um zozozo this is what we call a cartesian plane having the x and y exist most importantly we know a cartesian plane has got the origin so we draw lines functions whatever on a cartesian plane so we are having a straight line starting from that point uh, going in that direction up to that point so let's just let's just talk about that line alone being a b if you remember we did say lines of which when you extend it it ends in the first quadrant and the third quadrant they will always have positive gradient if you guys remember and most importantly because it cuts the y axis above the origin it means your c value will have to be a positive value meaning if you had to determine an equation of that straight line you are expecting y is equals to a positive gradient x and a positive c value very very much important okay so very quickly let's see what about this line a c can you see a straight line no no it doesn't end there but it starts from there and then okay so for this line if you extend it and it ends in the second quadrant and fourth quadrant you know that it's going to have a what is it a negative gradient and most importantly you notice it's going to cut the y axis above a uh, the origin meaning you are expecting y is equals to a negative gradient x positive c value that's if you are determining an equation of that line okay lastly what about this line so similarly if you extend this line you can see it ends in the second uh, quadrant i'm sorry to interrupt sir but you are breaking i'm not sure if it's me but okay. breaking for the past two minutes sure uh, 
then I need to try to do something. I will need someone to just quickly confirm. Uh, Charlotte, was I breaking from your side, honorable member? No, you have been clear on my side. Is uh, Buddha, was I breaking? Pagis? Uh, no, sir, you were fine on my side. Okay, this is what happens in Bandalakan Kulunku. Just in case, if I'm breaking, uh, immediately leave and then rejoin. Uh, if I'm still breaking, leave and then rejoin. Uh, sometimes it does happen that uh, maybe the network is poor on your side. Uh, that's when you need to leave and rejoin. Uh, in case if it still happens, then you can bring it to my attention. But uh, from what I notice, it seems like I've been clear on everyone's side. So for now, we'll just continue. But honorable member, I assume you left and rejoined. How is it now? Uh, I'll just be listening as I continue. Hey, what was I saying? 100%. So this is what I was saying. That line, similarly, it's going to have a negative gradient. The only difference will be you are going to have a negative C value, meaning an equation of that straight line you're expecting Y, which is equals to a negative gradient minus C value. So that's how you sort of have an idea whether you are in the right path or not. Most importantly, this angle a is that angle of inclination and because you are having a positive gradient so a uh, that simply means a uh, this is of course your angle of inclination but if you guys remember if you had something similar to that because for this line you're going to have a negative gradient um if you had to calculate that angle using m it's equal to tan angle you are going to get a negative angle that negative angle it simply means the angle that you're getting is this one on this side that is why honorable member said you will always get an acute negative angle meaning you need to say 180 degrees minus that negative angle you are going to get your angle of inclination which is going to be that one so all of this is explained in that lesson that I did when I was doing an introduction. And I can tell you now, let me quickly check if Molebuche has joined uh, today's lesson. Uh, no, no, it seems like Molebuche is not uh, there. Okay, that's fine. So this is what I'm about to say, honorable members. Um, anyone who's got a question based on what I've explained, or are we now ready to start answering the questions. Chantal, are you okay that side, honorable member? Yes, sir. Thank you. Philadelphia, uh, any questions, honorable member? Please, Bandu Bagiti, do not allow me to continue without you understanding a thing. No, 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 thank you, sir. Okay, in that case, I'm about to erase all of these and then we start answering the questions. Um, let me quickly check something very, very quickly. Uh, okay, what I'm looking for, I'm not able to uh, find it but it's fine in the meantime let's continue okay so let's see the first question remember guys this question uh, is one of the easiest questions but most importantly i just want you guys to understand how we apply all that we have learned so that come exams we can be able to remember almost everything or almost everything that you need to remember and most importantly it's not our last time doing this type of questions we will still redo these 
uh, after your mid-year examinations. And most importantly, uh, during your school holidays, as we don't close, it's wire, wire. Uh, we are only going to close end of uh, November or December. It depends on when your last exam will be. But most importantly, the aim is to complete the syllabus before your mid-year examinations because you are going to write about everything. Okay, very quickly, 4.1. Determine the gradient of AB. Hmm. Determine the gradient of AB. If you remember, there is A, there is B. And I've just said at all the times, the moment you are given an angle or the moment an angle is involved, always remember this formula which says the gradient is equals to tan of an angle. And you can see this mark, I mean, this question is allocated two marks. So this is where you easily apply this formula and not that one of M is equals to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So it's either you use this formula or that formula. But for this one, can you see, it only applies if you are given an angle or if you are given that. An examiner wants you to calculate an angle. Just always remember that. So let's see, what is tan of a 45 degrees. I think that is one. Is it not a one over one? Opposite of adjacent being one. I think that is one, honorable one. members. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So with you doing that, I'm telling you, I'm going to give you a mark there. I'm going to give you a mark there. No mark allocated for formula in mathematics because they assume it is given to you on the formula sheet. So I hope that makes sense to everyone. So very quickly, let's see. Gradient of A, B, it's equals to 1. Just in case, I'm going to need that. So I'm going to quickly remove that and we move on to the next question. I think that was a straightforward um, question. So let's see. Calculate the value of T. Justice. It's in most cases where in mathematics, the previous answer is going to help you to calculate the next uh, question. So let's see. Now they want you to determine uh, that. In case if you're trying to think and you've got no idea of where to start, just check if you can use the previous question to answer that question. You realize You've just calculated the gradient. And the formula for the gradient says y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You realize you actually do have two things. What are those? You've got an answer being the gradient, which is equals to 1. You have a point. Then you can use the other point to calculate the unknown. So... Between A and B, which letter comes first? A comes first. That is why we're going to assume that to be X1, Y1, this one X2, Y2. So that means uh, Y2 is actually 0 minus what is our Y1? I think it's 3 over what is our X2? Is it not T? I think that is T minus what is our that? That is a one. So when you simplify this, I think you end up having a negative three at the top, t minus one. And this is where you say, because you realize you are having a fraction this side, let's also fractionalize if that, that word exists in English. But uh, you know, most if you don't get it, forget about it. So let's see. Now, because you have fractionalized. A, the left side, so this is where you now need to cross multiply, meaning the whole of that, you multiply it by 1, you end up having t minus 1, and then that by that, it gives you that. So t is what you are looking for. That is why you're going to write it on the left side, and you transpose or you move whatever away from that t. So let's see, that means you end up having negative that and that, which means 
ut is actually equals to negative three so let's see what did the question say it said calculate uh, the value of t so it ends here because t is what they wanted you to calculate so for me with a pencil i will therefore say we actually have negative two and zero and that negative two it does make sense why because uh, uh, that point b it's actually on the negative side of um the origin here comes a question uh, anyone who understood what i've done over there does it make sense to everyone Yes, makes sense. Hmm. Uh, 70,630. Does it make sense, honorable member? Uh, I think I've asked this honorable member what their name is, and I couldn't get it. But I'm telling you, it's 70,630. Honorable member, does it make sense what we have just done over there? I wonder if honorable member will know uh, that I'm actually tembam tembana. Does it make sense? I think it does. Mzozozo. Everything's yeah. making sense. Yeah, yeah Vagala eh, Mzozozo before Nkubega. Ngalemi Mbuzole. Vagali Chiwenyameni se. Eh, hey, Mzozo Zontabanga, Uguti Uti, a eh, Nkubeke, a eh, Angang Zwanga, Gordon Zokubega, Mavania Quaz, Uguti, Masse, Ungazizi, Uzokulu, Mawati, hey, a eh, Imala, Po, Bopa, 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 Bopa. Okay, four point three, calculate P, the X coordinate of point c yes yes a uh, this is p the x coordinate of yes, yes i think this is where i need to invite on guys how can we approach this one the x coordinate of p just explain what we can possibly do there Balega yenya ozobili balega 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 sir what is the square oh. root of 50 this is the um, like but can you because if it is the gradient, you can just use the gradient formula and just solve for P. Uh, Hamisa it's was asking what is AC. If it is the gradient, we can use the gradient formula. Uh, anyone who would also like to give it a try. Thanks very much, honorable member, for that input. Another Sir. one. Yibu. Sir, AC is the Yibu. distance. Of line AC, you can use the Waze ganja. Waze ganja. Uguti. Because the information above said so. Yes. 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 Okay. So I think based on uh, what Hamisa said over there, uh, she made a, a very good point, which reminds me to emphasize uh, something uh, if something is written as bc if something is written as ac if something is written as ab it doesn't matter whether you say if is written or if is written it refers uh, to one and the same thing most importantly whether it's written or written as capital letters it means uh, distance or 
the length. If it's the gradient, uh, then examiner has to say in their own words to say whether it's the midpoint. They must say the midpoint of a uh, whatever, whatever it's equals to whatever, whatever. Uh, the gradient of whatever, whatever uh, it's equals to whatever, whatever. So it's more like there is no sign uh, that is used to refer to those, but they might need to actually, uh, in their own words, say it. But when it comes to um, the distance, examiner might not say the distance between a C, the distance between a B, a, or the length between B, C. They will just write it in capital letters. So uh, I hope you guys understand uh, that part. So can you see a uh, hami the hami sawama hami sa? It's not that you do not know how to work out this. For the fact that you knew that if this is the gradient, you're going to use the gradient formula. Can you see? It shows that you guys know what to do, but you only get confused or you become unsure because of this small a information that you might not have known. But I'm telling you now, because it has been emphasized in today's lesson, you will never forget that uh, when something is written in capital letters, it simply means uh, the distance or the length, meaning the distance formula is what we are going to use in this case. Meaning, very, very much important that you know this formula by heart. It says... Uh, I think x2 minus x1, you square, you plus y2 minus y1, you close, a, you square. I think I'm right with that formula. Remember, Bantu Bagiti, this formula, it comes from the theorem of a Pythagoras. That's why I will never forget this a, formula. A, this thing is one, you remember most, if you remove that square root, you end up, uh, introducing a squared on both sides. So that means you're going to have d squared, which is equals to uh, the whole of that squared, uh, uh, the whole of that squared. Can you see? The inside is actually x. The inside is actually y. You have a plus in between, and then those are being squared. So that's where this formula uh, comes from. And also uh, being the formula of a circle, this one. Uh, being the formula of a circle. Why is it the case? Because you are determining uh, the diameter of a circle. That is why when you use that distance formula, theorem of Pythagoras, just know in your head that you are actually calculating a diameter of which that diameter have that midpoint from there to there being the radius. That is why a question that may follow a would be the midpoint of that. A, so I think you guys have learned something out of what I've just said. Okay, let's see. Do we have two things? A, hey, it seems like we do. Can you see? We've got an answer being a, the distance. We've got a point. And most importantly, we've got another point, another one. A, I'm just not sure if that's how a Nigerian or Zimbabwean would say, I think it's Nigerian, an order wong. So that means we've got a point and an order wong. And in that other point, uh, we are looking for a X coordinate represented by point P. So let's see. A, I'm, I'm, I'm sure someone a, is done that side. Let's see. I've just substituted the distance, which is equals to between point A and point B. Which one is going to be my X2, X1, Y1, Y2? Which letter comes first? A comes first, that comes second. So that is why I'm going to say uh, this is going to be X2, Y2. So let's substitute inside the brackets. Can you see your X2 is the P that you're looking for? A minus, what is your X1? It's going to be 1 and then you... You do that, and then you say plus, you open. What is y2? Bantu bagit, because it's a negative value at all the times. Put it inside the brackets. Mzozo will tell you that a negative value is like a hot pot, a very hot pot of which if you don't put on the gloves, 
it's going to burn uh, your fingers. I'm telling you, Bantu Bagiti, always remember a negative value as a hot pot. So let's see. Uh, we have a minus from the formula. What is our y1? Uh, it's minus. Then you square. Uh, hey, let's see. We are having square root of 50, which is equals to this one. Uh, you cannot further simplify that. That's why I'm writing it as it is. But I think this one, you can work it out. Negative 40, no, no, negative 4 minus 3. I think that is negative 7. Square root of negative, no, no, negative 7 squared. Is it 49? Or I yes. think so. Huh? Is, it, is it 49? Yes. Let me do it. Yes. Uh, I don't trust you guys. Uh, me don't trust you. You guys is not make sure. Okay. Uh, it is indeed uh, 49. So let's see. Uh, what else can we do? I think because we are actually looking for P. Let's remove those uh, square roots. Obviously, you are going to introduce squared on both sides and that's how you remove the square root you remain with 50 and then you have p minus one because you have a squared there which means actually two of the same thing that's why i'm doing that you still have your 49 there i'm thinking a uh, how about we do a uh, hey order order honorable members uh, to me the two miss can you please take your seat honorable member okay 100 percent. so let's see um we are having that by that that by that that by that that by that let's see we still have that 50 on the other side so that means that by that it's p squared and that by that it's minus p that by that it's minus p that by that is plus one you still have a no no what am i doing you still have 49 there so let's now try to simplify that most importantly you remember guys the moment you see a letter a to a degree of two or to the power of two you already know that you're dealing with a, a quadratic equation which you need to rewrite it in the standard form and you are going to have two possible values then you choose from those two possible values so let's quickly check maybe we can take that to, but before we even do that can you see a uh, we are having p squared this two they actually give us negative 2p and then this two i think they give us a 50. You take this 50 to the other side, it changes the sign, it becomes that. Oh, because you take it to the other side, you remain with nothing. Mathematically, nothing means zero. So let's see. Hey, it's more like you're having p squared minus 2p because this two cancels and you have zero. And this is equals to zero. And this is where you remember a uh, offense. We said this thing is like you're saying offense. No, no. A person is offense so let's say offense is a person uh, it refers to one and the same thing so this is where you now need to factorize where you can take out p as a common factor because uh, that p actually exists on both sides so you are therefore going to say um p is equals to zero or a uh, p it's equals to 2 because you equate this to 0, you equate that to 0, take it to the other side, it's equals to that. So between this and this, which one is the p-value and what is the reason for your answer? Or how do you know which one is p? Our p is um, equals to 2 because our x values are, are positive. 100%. Do you guys still remember this statement which says p is greater than 0? So in this case, we get our p being equals to 2 or p uh, being equals to 2. So that means you cross that one to indicate that p it is not equals to zero because they said p is greater than zero meaning p is equals to two that is why you will see sometimes they can 
say where a uh, p equals to zero they just say not applicable because um that is not the answer for that p a uh, i'm not sure if honorable members understand what we were doing there but i'm having this feeling that uh, it's not everyone who understands what we've been doing there is uh, buddha angazi uguti uyazwisisa nomakha shanti shanti usasa khona ntombo yes sir i understand kwazi the makwazis bongi we bongi we iv ngumalo eh hey i see tando stuart is short eh Ye frustan honorable member of Nifrostan ni. Vat khanan eh Yanibe Tando the Matandos. Ye frustan. I see Tisha Moraho Morahwa. Tisha Tisha Morahwa. Eh I'm still waiting for honorable 70630 to respond. a uh, honorable member it seems like honorable member is sleeping in parliament uh, 70630 yes. are you there yes. honorable yes. member hey honorable member of the opposition party is sleeping in parliament i'm not sure a uh, if we are going to save the masses of our people I'm not happy. Seventy thousand six hundred and thirty. Eh, yes, yes. I could. Leslie, the Leslies. I see you are hiding in the corner there. Eh, ngiku jongi. Leslie, the Leslies. Do you understand, honourable member? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, hundred percent. a just make sure that you don't hide in the corner there ngiku jongi let's see we found our p value to be a what was it positive 2 so let me quickly say a this is what we are having just in case if a we need that answer but before a i forget i want to quickly say something very very much important a lebandlala ka nkulunkul especially to um our new learners who from time to time um send an inbox uh, with some problems there say a uh, tutor can you please assist i wish parents are listening uh, this message is actually directed to parents and not learners a uh, bazali be to when honorable member says can you please assist me with a homework project or assignment i am telling you now uh, we completely don't assist with a uh, those let me actually try not to speak louder so that a uh, honorable members don't hear what i'm about to say a uh, parents i want them to fail a uh, those homeworks tests and assignments or project uh, they must fail and they must fail big time reason to that is because if they give us uh, their homeworks projects and whatever they are going to get 100% uh, and you will see them working like uh, John Cena uh, feeling 100% uh, with their homeworks and it's it's really not good because it gives their teacher a false reflection the reason why you guys are given homeworks test assignments or project they just want to check to what extent do you understand what you have been taught in class can you be able uh, to do that on your own remember guys everything that we are doing it's unfortunate our honorable members are still in high school they don't know what's going to happen after high school they don't know what's happening after a uh, varsity when you get to the workplace they just give you a project to say um here is a mall can you design a uh, that mall you tell me bolebo uh, molebo this is you you just graduated and they gave you 
a, a project. Are you going to go home in Limpopo and say, Magogo, I'm given a, an assignment. Can you please assist? You tell me, Molebo. Hmm? You've just been given a project and they want you to, de- to design a, a mall. The client is waiting for their design to implement a... Um... No, I can't, I can't say that. You, you, you can't. It's highly impossible. Highly impossible. So this is what happens, guys. As soon as you are done with your uh, metric, you get to varsity level where you do not know anyone. You don't have friends. You don't have anyone. You're studying something completely different. Uh, you need to figure out things by yourself. That's why when you are given a project, you need to do a research on your own. Study or check all possible uh, or all possible answers from different textbooks. Do something. Once you've done something, that's when you can say, uh, honorable member, I'm given this and I went through this, and these are my findings. Can you just uh, check any possible uh, errors or silly mistakes? Then I'm easily able to look at that and say, yeah, no, this is practical, but this is not practical. So for you to come up with the best solution, refer to this uh, link where a lesson has been done explaining how to do that. So that's how we train you on how to carry out projects by yourself. Most importantly, in case if you can't find any information, do not be ashamed of submitting something which is worth 3%. As long as you've done it by yourself, it gives your teacher an indication that um, it means you have 3% worth of an understanding. Therefore, on my upcoming lessons, I'm therefore going to emphasize more so that you fully understand. But if you come with 100%, what are you expecting your teacher to do? Because you got 100%. That means you know everything. So there's nothing to emphasize on. There's nothing uh, to, to further discuss because you got 100%. So come exam, this is you with a 3% and you are now starting to faint uh, simply because you thought with your assignments you were getting those then it's an indication that uh, you are doing well rather get three percent with your homeworks classworks and whatever and then make sure that you study more and build towards getting 100 percent so a uh, bazali bay too this is the reason why we completely do Bantu Bagiti, I come back. Eh, hey, Usatanu no mona. Eh, Bengsa se busy in Elvanda la Gankulunculu. Eh, Nfundi sil Gamalaga Jays. Usatan Wavela one keeper. Eh, Oxalayo, Buile. But otherwise, um, Leslie the Malesleys, did you get that motion of no confidence against a uh, forwarding homeworks? Tando the Matandos, can you can you vote? Can you vote uh, with my motion of no confidence? Yes, sir, I do, but then besides that, can I please ask a question? Yes, you can ask a question, honourable oh. member. Okay, um, so 
I think majority of us here know that like in matric rights, we get like probably like a case study and an investigation and all that, right? So for example, let's say with those, like you get high mm. marks, right? And then your examination, you know, like that like probably you do mm. bad or something. Like the marks don't compare to what you got with the investigation and the other mm. thing. Do they penalize you or something or do like what happens with that? Like if your marks do not match your investigation and yeah. A, maybe just to give a general response, I think during my time there was something called cast mark, where whatever that you do and submit and everything uh, during the year, I th think we were actually working towards 25 percent so all the homeworks assignments and everything they actually contribute towards a 20 percent and i think they used to call it cast mark i don't even know how to write that cast mark uh, oh yes but i know is cast then a uh, mark your examinations will be 75 so that means in my case i remember i never worried that much uh, with my homeworks assignments and everything i used what i understood even if i got lower marks uh, my main aim was to uh, try and make sure that i prepare for exams because i'm suspecting that if you get lower marks during uh, the year and then during final examinations if you do well i'm suspecting this falls away i'm not Hundred percent sure with that. A, a Memon Dave for physical sciences. She's uh, the HOD at her school, and uh, she's also uh, forming part of those who mark at the marking center. For those of you guys who are doing a uh, physical sciences, you can also ask just to confirm uh, that. So, a uh, the Tandos. I did not do well during the year, but I knew. And I could feel it that during examinations, I did well because all that I've, I've been doing during the year, it was to practice exam type of question papers. Um, and I ended up getting uh, distinctions uh, that includes mathematics and physical sciences. And I could feel it that it's not because of uh, what I've been getting during the year with my whatever and whatever and whatever. So you can still get about 3%, about 2%, in the middle of the year but during exams they understand that this could serve as a motivation to you to say i'm getting lower marks during the year i therefore need to work hard and then during exams you can still get that you won't be penalized you can't be penalized they can't say um because you're getting lower marks it's highly impossible that you can get a a high marks during examinations they know that um, after getting this lower marks you're going to start studying hard uh, seeking extra assistance, work hard and everything uh, until you get uh, those high marks. But if you were getting higher marks, you were getting higher marks and everything, higher marks and everything, then come examinations, you get lesser marks. They won't say because you're getting higher marks during the year, uh, then we just make you pass. Because the person who's going to be marking your final exam paper, they don't know whether you're coping uh, during the year. They don't know whether you're buying uh, those high, high marks. They don't know whether you were forwarding uh, your homework assignments and everything to tutors and the tutors have, has been doing uh, the work for you. They'll just give you a very nice zero and then you do a rewrite or uh, something of that nature. I think Tando the Matandos, that generally answers uh, your question. But, but most importantly, guys, I just remembered now, uh, there will be a time where I'm going to invite someone who knows uh, this better in one of our upcoming uh, events and most importantly don't miss an event that is coming uh, this next week monday you know during our events we invite uh, our honorable speaker uh, to attend to some of lena's 
uh, issues. I think you've noticed a uh, Uh, guys, I got disconnected a bit and I realized it's because um, my Wi-Fi went on. So very quickly, let me try to work out that 4.4. In case if I'm breaking, please let me know immediately. But most importantly, can you see that question it says, hence, determine the midpoint of B, C. Hmm? Determine the midpoint. Oh, yes. Mid, midpoint of B, C. Uh, it should be an easy question because we've got everything uh, there. So, Tando the Matandos. I'm continuing because I realize uh, I'm running out of a battery and also uh, my Wi-Fi is down. So, I'm actually using a data. So just in case of poor connection and I don't come back in two minutes time, you can all leave and assume the lesson uh, is done. So just be aware of that. Let's see. X1, obviously C, I mean B because it can. So that, so that means we're having negative two. Uh, what is P? P is two over two. Uh, what about uh, Y? Obviously, it is y1 being 0 plus in brackets negative 4 over 2. So you just work out that. Obviously, the top is 0 divided by 2, it's 0. This one, you are obviously getting 0 plus um, negative 4, which gives you a negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So can you see, that means the midpoint between these two points you are actually getting a... Hmm? Did I do it correctly? Hey, BC. I think I've done it correctly. I'm just not sure if there's someone uh, to back me up on that one. Because we have... Yes, this correct. coordinates as B. This coordinates as... Someone is saying it's correct. Um, but does it make sense to everyone? Why am I suspecting something there? Yeah, no, it's correct. It's correct. Yes, it's correct. And that was a straightforward uh, answer, that one. So very quickly, we are now about to uh, move on to um, the next question which is the last question uh, but very quickly uh, the mashantis can you hear me honorable member are you still able to hear me and are you still able to see there clearly uh, charlotte offense am i breaking now starting no, sir. to lose. You can hear hey. Yeah, it so, hey, uh, honorable member just confirmed Oguti. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Four point five determine the yes. So but the thing is bad. Like it's blurry. Uh, That's the only okay. problem. Okay, uh, the Matandos, remember to quickly leave and rejoin. Uh, quickly leave and rejoin. Uh, someone, can someone confirm if it's clear? I, I, I just remembered, today's quote, this is today's quote. We're going to use that number of our honorable member. What is it? 70,000. 630. That is going to be the code for today's lesson. Uh, if you can hear me, it's going to be 70,630. When the lesson ends, comment with that in the group so that we know who attended today's lesson. Uh, 
you guys are saying you can't see let me quickly try to do this you will let me know if you are now able to see uh, tando how about now can you see i think i should leave and join again or maybe it's only me that sees it blurry uh, maybe let me check hamisa it's how is it now, now? It's clear. Okay, it's clear now. Uh, the Matandos, try to leave and rejoin Honorable Member. Uh, so this is the code for today's lesson. Um, so 4.5 says determine the equation of the line parallel to AB passing through point C. Hmm. Anyone would like to explain how we can possibly uh, approach this question. Determine the equation of the line parallel to B, no, no, parallel to AB passing through point C. Anyone who would like to give it a try? Seventy thousand six hundred and thirty. Uh, so we are have you there, the gradient. There, honorable member. We have the gradient that is one and a point C. So I substituted mm -hmm. it into the formula y minus y1 equals to mx bracket x minus x1. Oh, yes. Uh, I remember that way of determining um, an equation, but it's fine. Uh, you are 100% correct, honorable member. This is what a uh, honorable of the opposition party is saying she says uh, we have line a b if you construct a line which is parallel to that a b passing through that c you have something similar to that you know most we discussed it to say parallel lines have got equal gradients meaning the gradient of this line also is going to be one passing through that known point. That is why honorable member said y is equals two. What is the gradient of that line? Is that one? So that means you're having invisible one x plus c. And she says at what point? At a point of c where x is two and then that is negative four. So y is negative four, x is two plus a C, which is what we are looking for. Take it to the other side. It's more like C is equals to negative 6, meaning the equation of that line is equals to Y is equals to X minus 6. So that's how you determine an equation of that line. I'm not sure if it makes sense to everyone. Uh, does it make sense, Pandubagiti? Um, does it make sense? Sir, I don't understand. A uh, order, order, honorable members. A uh, who is the honorable who indicated a uh, they would like a quick re explanation on that one? Uh, sorry, me. Hey, who is me? Chantal Shavangu. Oh, Shanti. Uh, okay. From today, I'm calling you me. Okay, me. Uh, let's talk. So, I'm going to include another question on this. Me, do you remember where we were saying uh, parallel lines? For parallel lines, let's say for parallel lines, a gradient of line one is equals to gradient of line two. And then we also said uh, for 
perpendicular lines. When you multiply gradient of line 2 with gradient of line A1, uh, they are equals to negative 1. So that means if there is a line which is like that, and they say this line is parallel to that line, that means the gradient of this line is equals to the gradient of that line. So if gradient of this line is equals to 2, also the gradient of this line is equal. If you are having a line in that direction, and they say the gradient of that line you calculate it to be negative 3, and they say there is another line passing through at that point this line is parallel to that so that means you are having that because it's parallel that means also the gradient of this line is negative a uh, three and if you remember since analytical geometry is a game of two things and uh, we have that a uh, gradient and you also have a point so that means with that and also a point you can then determine an equation of that line a uh, I'm not sure if it makes sense, uh, me, the mummy. Uh, does it make sense, me? So I understand that. What I don't understand is like when you um, removed M from like the formula, when you said Y equals to X plus C. Oh, like, where did okay. the M go? Hey, E A P A E M. Okay. A it's unfortunate you joined a bit later, but uh, when I started this year on the 2nd of January, I said we have what we call a term in mathematics. Uh, if I write X there, I'm telling you, the likes of Hamisa, Bomzozozo, uh, I'm not sure if Kolahano in Pretoria North is there, but Chantal, you might be seeing X, but other honorable members, they are not only seeing X, they know that. A term, it is made up of a sign a, followed by a number, if you like, a coefficient, followed by a letter, and then lastly, a power. This is a general a, way of representing a mathematical term, meaning a, we are not only seeing X there, but we see a sign which is invisible positive. We see a number, which is invisible one. We see a letter, which is invisible. No, no, this one is visible. We also have a power of invisible positive one. So can you see, if you have P, it's not only P, you have positive one P to the power of one. If you have Y, which is negative Y, this thing is the same as negative one Y squared. So that means, um, Shanti the Mashantel, if they send you to go and buy a bread and they say, a, maybe a Rivega Spade is Chantel, when I get Zoro will last be, Baru Tlagani Lee, that time with Tlagani Lee Gadze, are you going to say, get Tlagani Lee one Gadze or go get Tlagani Lee Gadze? I'm going to say get Tlagani Lee Gadze. <laughs> Yes, because there is no need for you to say one gas. That is why when you write x, you don't say one x, but you just say x. Oh, 